Friday evening. The days are going so fast. I don't know about you guys, but I am totally not ready for Christmas yet. So it's it's going way, way too fast for me. So we have um, an ornament to make. So all of the kits that I had prepped um, here for the shop were sold. I did um, make a few more that I had left with the adhesives, um, but they are slightly different. So I believe there's five over there um, and they won't have white. They'll have extra red in them for that uh, white layer. So um, you can still make that. It'll just be um, silver, red, silver. So if you haven't picked up your kits yet, I do have a couple left um, and you guys can come on in and grab them. So this is a pretty straightforward um, piece. It's going to um, be a couple different cut files. If you haven't been um, listening, the um, files that they are doing, and when I say they, if you look right there, um, it says the Dreaming Tree, and their address is 3dsvg.com. I love them. They are phenomenal. I think they do a great job. Um, big picture with all of their files. They do tend to be a little bit more paper project oriented than anything else, but they do have a few other things there as well. Um, so if you would like to check, check them out, I highly, highly recommend it. In addition to having really nice files, they also have fantastic instructions. So you get uh, printed instru instructions from their site, but you also get um, videos for everything that I've ever bought and made. There's been a video, I assume, then that there is a video for um, all of the different pieces. So we're going to get going and I'm going to show you the basics of what we're doing here. So we have multiple files. There is the um, two pieces of silver and that is going to be cut out of the one piece. I've been asked multiple times um, over the last few days if they can get more than one out of here. Um, and I don't believe that you can um, just from the way that the files are set up. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. Um, the small piece of red foil in your kits, if you purchased one, um, is going to be for the frame that goes around the photo. So that is that little guy. And then if you purchased them previously, this piece would be white in your kit. It's a six by six um, piece of really pretty glitter. You should also have an ornament string, which I don't know how well you guys can see that, um, but there's a silver ornament string. And then there are foam squares um, in there for adhesion of the layering. So the one thing that I did, if you did get the files from here, um, I did alter the circle piece that goes um, around the photo. So this is kind of like the photo frame portion of that. Um, in the original file from Dreaming Tree, it has you cut the outside first and then the inside. And the reason that I changed it is because we're giving you, um, you know, just the square of red, um, there's not a lot of surface um, for it to stick to the mat really well. So when that middle um, is basically cut out of that, so when it does that outer circle, the circle in the middle kind of released itself from the adhesion. Um, I did it multiple times and it did it every time. So I reversed the cut order. So it's going to cut the middle first and then the outside. I'll explain that a little bit more. So if you get um, or have already gotten the files from the store here in the folder, there is a file that is called order powder. And then there is the element powder as well. So um, the order is the one I changed the order for. So in general, when using paper, I do recommend um, using a low tack mat. The paper needs to stick, but you need to have that come back off. So our mats here are starting to get fairly well used. Um, I am currently using a standard mat um, and I have cleaned it, so it should be pretty sticky, but at the same time, um, I should be able to still get that back off. The reason that I generally recommend the low tack is because if, especially if you have a brand new standard mat, it's way, way too sticky um, to use with paper. It will literally like split the paper in two and half of it will stay on the mat and the other half will come off and you'll be a little bit frustrated. Um, and it's not real easy to clean paper um, off the mat. So I do, don't recommend that you use a really, really sticky mat when you're using paper. If you are having trouble getting it to stay, there is this fantastic stuff. Brother has actually come out with um, scan and cut 
there's brother, scan and cut tape. This is similar to paper tape. It's much more flexible. So, you know, when you play with paper tape, it's pretty stiff. Um, and if you like stick it on a door frame, it sticks out pretty um, stiffly. This is a little bit more pliable and um, you can actually put it right on the adhesive on the mat and it will come right back off too. So you're not leaving um, excess. I do sometimes use Kimberbell tape, um, but this comes off the adhesive a little bit better. We have many, many rolls of this here if you would like some and it's only $4.99 for the roll. So if you are having problems, with your paper adhering onto the mat, you can go ahead and put adhesive down the sides. All right. Um, I do not, I'm going to flip my mat around here. This is the top. So it's got the arrow that's pointing in. I do not recommend putting tape up here. The reason is that this is where the machine tests. Um, if you have a DX model machine, it's going to test for that height and you don't want to have it, um, testing the height with the um, tape. You want to make sure that it's not going to be um, causing that kind of problem because it will give you the wrong height on there. So I'm going to go ahead and load my mat and I'm going to switch to my other camera. And there it is. All right. So actually I'm going to make that one the solo. It's going to switch all the way over there. So here we go. Um, this is off my USB and it is all SVG files. So you can see here, I have an element powder, element white, main silver foil, the ordered element. So that ordered element one right there is the one that I adjusted. And then the photo template. I'm not actually gonna cut a photo template today because I don't have any pictures here, but this will give you um, basically the same size as this guy here um, without the inner piece cut out. So it's going to give you that photo that's the perfect size. And then this would just be glued right on top of it. So if you um, are cutting along with me, go ahead and select the main foil, which is the silver. It's gonna be on the top there. All right. And you can see we have two pieces here, which is why um, I said I do prefer to leave um, just the one because it's going to fill that up pretty, pretty clearly, uh, fully across that whole piece of the silver. Just to make sure that I do have that where I would like, I'm going to go ahead and take a picture and scan what's on my mat. So I have my silver paper there and I am going to go ahead and just scan this in. So basically what this does is it takes and goes, ooh, look at that. Let's not use that little guy right there, huh? All right, so I'm gonna just hang on to that. You can see that it is speeding that right through the machine. And now it's going to come up and it shows you right on screen where that is at. So I wanna make sure that I have a nice clean cut everywhere here. I'm actually gonna rotate the design so that it sits the other direction so that I make sure that I have plenty of room. So I'm gonna come into edit and object edit. If you are using a CM machine, it's going to have the same buttons. They're just gonna be in slightly different positions. So up here in my upper right is my rotate. That's not what I was looking for. <laughs> so here we go. Got to love these. Uh, your fingers sometimes touch things that you don't want. I'm going to go ahead and turn that to the right. So now you can maybe see a little bit clearer um, that I have a lot more clearance space around there. I don't want to come right up next to the edges. I want to make sure that I have space around there. You're always going to get a nice clean cut um, if that doesn't have anywhere to push and move. So you want to have a little bit of a rim around the outside of your design. All right, so I have that positioned nice and easy. If you um, wanted to angle these, it's very possible that you could squeeze maybe a second cut in there, um, but you can see that they are a grouped file. I only have one file here. So you wanna make sure that um, you have that space. If you have other software, you could actually separate those out and ungroup them, um, but you cannot do that here in the machine you would have to use some software. Um, I am using the Disney um, SDX 230. So on this machine, I do not have to do any test feature unless I'm a little concerned about the strength or the sharpness, if you will, of my knife. So what I'm looking for right here is I have um, the time that it's going to take to cut this, what my pressure is currently set at, my speed, and then the all important half cut. So with paper, we want to go all the way through. Um, when we were doing the heat transfer vinyl on the last um, 
little video that we had done, I, I want to have that on half. So that would need to say on here after half cut. So if you have that on half cut on, you would need to then go into the wretch and page down. And on page two, right there at the top is half cut. And then you can turn that back to off if you don't have that already for you. If you have any questions as we're going through all of this, please feel free. You can um, go ahead and add things in the comments. I can see what you have up there. So if you have a question, please feel free to go ahead and type that in. And I will do my best to answer that as we go through. All right, so I have everything all ready. If I am concerned about my blade, I can do a test cut. If you have a CM series machine, either a 350, a 550, or a 650, you will want to do um, a test. My guesstimate on where your blade would need to go, it's going to be somewhere between six and seven probably for the actual blade itself over here. Um, and then in your settings, I'm guessing you're probably going to need a one, maybe a two on the pressure. This is pretty heavy cardstock, so you want to make sure that you're getting all the way through there. Um, my speed is set at a three, so it's certainly um, pretty easy. Um, it's going to slow it down just a little bit. The default speed is at five, but I personally prefer that to be... Um, just a little bit slower. I'd rather it take its time and get all those corners really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera again so that you guys can see just a little bit better what's being cut down here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit start on the machine. So this is a pretty quick cut. Again, um, this is testing. So it's, it's testing off where there is no surface material, and then it goes to where it is. This is a very reflective surface, so I apologize. Um, if you guys are getting a lot of glare in your video, I can't really fix that because I got you guys really, really pretty paper to do this. But you can see it's plowing right through that really nice and easy. All right. I do have my black blade in. All right. So that was the little circle that's going to be um, the hanging hole at the top. And then this is the um, upper layer of the silver. And that's going to have some little cutouts. So that's where it's going right now. And we're getting those little tiny pieces all taken care of. Hey, Tony, you want to be live with me? He says, no, thank you. So sorry, guys. <laughs> Can't say I'm overly surprised because that's not really his favorite thing to do. All right. So this is going to be my base layer. And then it's going to be um, the third layer up. This is the spatula that is um, part of the spatula and hook set. This is the spatula that actually comes with it. Um, I personally prefer the metal one. If you haven't gotten those tools, I do definitely recommend. And I am just pushing and giving myself a little bit of lift there so that I'm not peeling um, and I'm getting the adhesive to kind of let go of my piece. So you can see that cut beautifully, nice and clean. And what I want to do now is I want to get an edge so I'm actually bending my mat a little bit so that it pops off so I can put my spatula right underneath there. So I have that beautiful piece already. I'm just going to go ahead and set it aside and I'm going to make a nice big pile of all of the pieces that I need. So on this one, again, I'm going to bend the mat until I can get underneath so I'm not separating my paper. And then I'm just going to go around and gently lift until I get that all off. Now, all of my little decorative pieces are still on the mat. I'll need to take those off, but you can see how nice and clean and beautifully that cuts through. If you are using a CM series machine, you are going to get just as good of a cut. It's just gonna take you a few extra tries because you need to do a test to get to the right layer. So that is the really nice piece about this machine or the 225 is it does that test feature for you. So as that came across, it touches here and it gets a baseline, all right? So that's where there's nothing. And then it goes to where your cut file is and it tests again. And it takes the difference between there and that's what it sets the blade at. So it's nice and easy and very straightforward, works super fast. And it's just so much less stressful to do all of these different pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and put my red paper, which again, if you bought a kit previous to today and you're cutting along with me, yours would be white for this, all right? So you would have a six by six glittered white um, piece of paper. So I'm going to come back over here, turn up just a hair so you can see my screen again. Alrighty. I'm going to come back home and I'm going to pull up what in here is going to be the white. So I'm going to go to retrieve data back into my USB 
into that beautiful star ornament inside my SVGs. And then here's those options again. So the element that is white is what you would want for this. So again, if you already have a kit, this is the piece that I am currently cutting would be where the white glitter paper would be. So I choose that. It shows me on screen what I've got there. I click OK and it comes right onto my mat. So now I have my um, silver foil that I can see on there. I know that it's going to be somewhere over here in the middle of the mat because that's where I put my red paper. But I need to know exactly to make sure that I get that beautiful cut. So I'm going to go ahead and rescan so that I get a new picture on screen. For those of you who have scanned before, you know that there is a background setting that you can make an adjustment to. If you don't have too much experience in doing this, I'm going to show you real quick how we can change the way that this picture comes up onto the screen. All right, I did a pretty good job actually of putting my, um, my cut file right on top of the paper. But what if I can't see that? So you guys can kind of see that it's kind of faded out. It's not a really dark square. I'm going to go into my settings and here on the bottom and whether you're on a CM machine or a DX machine, this is going to be the same thing. It's on the bottom of that first page. It says background. We have the media, which is where I generally leave that personally. Off would be getting rid of the picture. So it would take that picture that's up there and, and turn it off so that I can't see it. It would just be the grids that are on my mat. The dark one here is going to give me a much darker picture. So you can see even um, at that angle how much it changed the color that I see on screen. So I can't see my cut lines anymore. All right. So now if I pull that over, you guys can see a little bit that red line that's coming out there. I can't tell where that is at if I can't see through that paper. So that's why that medium is on there and it works so well. It's because it gives a faded out look. The only time I really use um, that dark setting is if I'm using white paper, um, which when I showed this with actual white paper, it made a lot more sense. But I don't have any of that left. Y'all bought all of it. So um, we're just going to... Um, do the best that we can and you guys can certainly understand that so again to change the way that you're perceiving what's on screen here you can adjust the background through your settings button so i've got my piece all lined up all right this is actually pretty similar to the silver foil so if you are um going to purchase one of the few kits that i just made it would actually be pretty much the same settings sorry about that let me turn all right, so um, it would be the same settings pretty much of what we just had. All right, if you have the white glitter, it is a little bit um, heavier paper. We're gonna go ahead and cut that little trimmy um, hole at the top. All right, and now I wanna pop this off. So I've got a hole up there that I need to make sure um, is going to stay there. Again, I'm bending my, my mat just a little bit so that I can get underneath there so that I'm not leaving pieces on there. And that's going to pop right back off. I'm going to put that with my excess mat, um, my excess paper over there. And then I need to pull this up. So again, I push that mat just enough that it kind of partially releases that. And then that pops right up for me. And my hole is nice and clearly cut there as well. All righty. So I'm going to put that in that file file in that pile um, with my other cut pieces. At this point, all I have left to physically cut is going to be that little circle um, that's going to go on top of the photo. For those of you at home who are making these for your tree and you're putting pictures in there, you of course have one more cut. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys those files one more time. So I'm going to switch back to my machines screen and I'm going to go back home delete what's on screen and go to retrieve data. Um, just a side note, if you do have a CM series, it says save data and it's up at the top of your screen. Going to hit that USB, go through all of the folders that are currently on this USB. And here are my elements. So we have done the white and we have done the main silver foil. What would I have left to do would be the element powder. In their original file, they actually had a blue circle instead of red. So um, that's the powder was a powder blue, if you saw the whole file name. Um, but remember that I have reordered that. So we're going to want to choose the ordered element, not the element powder file. 
Um, and again, the reason for that is because of the size of paper. You don't have enough surface area to really get a good grip. It likes to pop off much, much easier. Um, the other file that is here, this last one is the photo template. So again, for those of you at home that are doing this, you would need to cut out your photograph to put on the ornament itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that down on my map. All right, and I'm gonna back up just a little bit. So we're going to um, need to put that right on there. So we're going to need to scan it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select that and get it up on screen. Now, one thing with the file that I created is it did not combine both of the files together. So if I move it, I'm only gonna get one of the two circles. So before you move it, you need to regroup and make that one file instead of two separate ones, okay? So we're gonna go in our editing. And this portion here is the same on either a CM series machine or a DX model. We're looking for these three red squares that are in this grouping. Um, on your CM models, you would hit your editing tools up in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, and then you would see this. For thus, us that have this machine here, you're going to hit edit, and this is then the screen that comes up, and we're just going to tap those three red squares. This is your grouping mechanism. You have two different options here, and again, this is exactly the same on both model machines. The one on the left that has an arrow allows you to select from specific areas on the map. The one on the right is going to select everything on screen. So I know you guys can't see it because there's a glare over here, but I now have two red squares around my cut files instead of just the one. I'm going to go ahead and exit this now that I have everything on screen selected. Okay. For those of you who have a CM machine, you're going to have a box right here. It's literally correct right to the left of the OK button, and you're going to push that one. And it's going to look like this button here. Give me one second. So these um, machines, we need to hit Object Edit, and then that comes up. So it is this square with a circle and a triangle inside. So when I do this, it's going to then turn that in to, I'm going to move the camera with my hand here so you guys can see a little bit clearer. So now I have one red box. If I deselect that, I get two again. So that is what this button does, is it groups those items together. So now when I move it, I get both of them equally and it's going to give me a nice, clean, balanced set of circles instead of just the one. All right, so now I need to find out where my red square is on the map. So I'm going to go back to my main screen, and I'm going to rescan, which is that, again, blue square with the bar going through it. It's going to take a picture of what's here and put it up on screen for me. Just takes a second. All right, you notice I'm putting a couple pieces of um, that wonderful tape. The reason being is because it's such a small piece, I wanna make sure that nothing's going to happen and this isn't going to move at all when I start cutting. So this is that wonderful Brother Scan and Cut tape. And I'm just going to very gently tape down my sides. I don't need to have a whole lot of surface grabbing hold. I just need to make sure that it's not going to push and shift as I start cutting. All right, so I'm real gently placing that on there. Then I'm, when I'm going back up on my screen here, I need to make sure, just like we've been doing, that my cut file is lined up. And I, that glare on that screen is just something awful. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit. So I need to make sure that this is going to be right in there. It's a little bit hard to see because it's so much smaller. So I'm actually gonna go into my edit menu and I'm gonna zoom in. So now I can really see much, much better. There we go, sorry about that. And I need to move that over just a little bit. Okay, and I'm just gonna move it down. I want it centered as much as possible inside of that. So I want to try to get an equal amount of space around uh, the circle all the way around. Okay, so we're all set there. I'm gonna go ahead and exit this screen and get back to my main. So from here, I just need to tell it to cut. So I'm gonna one more time, Move this so that you guys can see what's happening. A little bit wider screen. I choose cut. All righty. I've got my half cut off just like I had before. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit start. So just like it's been doing, it's going to come along. It's going to test off the top of the mat. And then it's going to go to where my product is. And it's going to test again. 
So again, these machines are certainly fantastic. There is a current mail-in rebate for the Disney version um, that you would receive the rolling bag. Now check this out. I can actually pause my machine and it will go right back to where I was before. So if I'm having a problem and this inner circle pops out, I can pause, grab a pair of tweezers, pull that out of the way so that it's not gonna get stuck anywhere. And you can do this at any point during your cutting cycle. So if you have, if you're cutting paper and pieces pop up, which they are unfortunately want to do, you can pause it, pull off the cut pieces so that they're not getting caught either underneath the blade or inside here when the mat is moving back and forth. So pausing is certainly very, very easy and we can keep going again. If you're pausing because you have an issue and you've got to start over, you can of course hit quit cutting, but I don't want to do that. I want it to go right back to where it was. So I hit start. It's going to retest. There's nothing wrong with the machine. It's going to go back up to that top and it's going to come right back to where I was. And now it's going to cut that outer circle. So being able to pause your cut is certainly very helpful. And now we're going all the way around and we're going to get that nice circle and that outline that's going to frame our photograph beautifully. So I've got this perfect piece cut and I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I've been doing. So where we're at, I need to remove the tape. So I'm going to gently peel that up. I can take that and stick it on the side of my machine or I can even stick it right on the front like I had er earlier. I generally push mine off to the side so that they're not in my way at all. All right, so there's my excess and that's gonna go in my pile of excess paper. Some of us are, are kind of hoarders and we can't throw any scraps away. If you are one of those, by all means, keep this paper for a future project. So again, I am bending my mat. I'm not putting a crease in it. I'm bending it just enough that I can get those pieces off nice and easily. So I've got that inner circle, which I don't need, unfortunately. I'm gonna put that with my excess. And then I have the outer rim, which is going to frame my pho photograph. I'm gonna put that with my pile and I'm actually gonna rearrange the counter here so that you guys can see me put this all together and how simple it actually ends up being. All right, so got my pile of goodies over here. And now we just need some more space. All right, see my lovely cookie belly this time of year. Isn't that always fun? So I've got all of my different pieces. We're going to layer the silver large piece on the bottom. The red, or in your case, if you have a kit already, is going to go um, on top of that. And you're going to match up those two little hanger holes when you put that down. Once you have that in place, you can then place this piece on top of that one. And then last but not least, you have the red um frame that's going to go around your photo. So I have supplied you with what are called um, foam 3D squares. You can also use something like a pop dot or whatever happens to be in your repertoire of goodies. I did order all of this stuff off of Amazon. So there's certainly um, lots of things that you can get if you would like to. So it's just a matter of um, what you find you personally like to do. So the backs of these are sticky. And then there's a little piece of paper on the top. So what I want to do is I'm going to simply place four squares kind of in a square um, on the back of my, in your case, white paper, or if you're getting one of these newer kits, the red. So I'm just going to put my little pieces of trash aside. You can take those off afterwards if you prefer. Either way will work. So I've got one down there. If I want to take the papers off afterwards, I'm going to just peel them off the backing, slap it down. And again, um, I have given you four. So what these do is it gives you a little bit of lift to that paper. So um, you can see that there is a height um, on there and it gives it just a little bit of pop up off the um, from the next level. So since I didn't take those papers off three of them, I need to do that. So I simply use my fingernail, tweezers, whatever it is you happen to have. And I'm gonna go ahead and have that ready. So what I really need to do, and I'm gonna turn this around so hopefully you can see a little bit better. You've got that hanging hole. That needs to line up with the hanging hole on here. So what I generally do is I hold it up above until I get everything balanced and making sure I can see all the way through 
the hanging hole to make sure that I have it where they're going to line up. And then I want to make sure that all of the spaces here are all equal all the way around. So I want to make sure that I have a balanced centered piece lining up with that hole. Once I have that, I'm just going to place that in. And you can then see I've got my layer first started. This is much shinier <laughs> doing it this way than with the white glitter. Lots of mirror edges on this one. So I've got three of these left. I am now going to make a triangle and I'm going to put one at the top and then two across the sides. All righty. <laughs> Isn't this a cute project? I know, Shanae, I love it as well. Um, and yes, I unfortunately have repeated this a couple of times. So if um, you watched a previous video, I have this is um, the second time frame that we are offering this. Uh, generally in December, I do a scan and cut um, class in store that basically has no class fee. So it's kind of like a gift um, from Labu that we do that for you and you can easily come in um, and, and just pick up the kit or whatever it happens to be. So this year, there's a little bit more work involved, unfortunately, but um, I still wanted to provide a free scan and cut class. Um, again, you can see the Dreaming Tree uh, scrolling across the bottom, and that is where this file is from. And they are really, really good, and I wanna make sure I'm giving them credit because they do such a nice job. Um, and this totally matches my nails, if anybody else has noticed. <laughs> I'm just super impressed because I'm, I'm coordinating here and I don't normally coordinate quite so well. So you can see um, that there is height given in there. So it's not just a flat piece. If you don't want a flat piece, you could certainly just use some standard um, craft glue or um, if you're a scrapbooker and you have a whole bunch of other stuff on there, you certainly could use that as well. So speaking of that craft glue, the photo is not intended to be 3D, so it's, it's planning on sticking right onto that silver. So that would be your first step. You're going to take, um, <laughs> see, I didn't notice the other day, but there you go. I did the dip. You guys done the dip? It's a lot of fun. I actually did it at home. Um, my daughter and I did it. I was on vacation last week, and so hers looked completely different than mine do, but we did the dip. So lots of, lots of fun. Highly recommend it. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take, um, pretend this is my photograph. Where to go? There we are. Um, you're going to flip that to the back, and you're going to slap your glue on there, and then just put that right in the center. There is a circle here that perfectly fits, so it's nice and easy um, to be able to line that up. It literally lines up perfectly with the outside circle of this top piece of silver. Um, and yes, Diana, this is going to be recorded. Um, well, it's being recorded as we speak. Um, and so you will be able to um, to go back, watch it over and over again. Or if you um, want to actually watch this while you're cutting, you can pause and everything. And, and I, I apologize. I guess maybe I don't have my volume turned down quite as much as I should have. Let's see if that helps. Does that help the echo at all? I apologize. Hopefully it does. Okay. okay. Nope, don't, don't think, think it does, because now I can hear myself. Um, okay, okay, so, so once, once you have, have your photo there, there, that is so weird. Hmm. You're going to then take your frame, and yes, the dip lasts much, much longer, which is why I really like doing it. And what I have found is I change, yeah, I'm sorry, Shanae, I, I can hear myself now. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but... Um, I was just saying, when I break a nail or one falls off, I just dip that one and that's how it makes it all work, which is really awesome. So here I have, um, and I would generally put a little piece of paper or something down so that I'm not getting it all over uh, the table, but I'm just gonna hold it up and squish around my glue so you guys can see how this all goes together. All right, um, this just happens to be the glue that we have available here at the shop. Um, oh, and Evidently, it likes to hang on to my hair. So once I have that, it literally lines right up on that circle all the way around. All right. So it will certainly um, look really nice. I actually really like the red. Um, so 
I think maybe we'll have to find some more adhesive and make just a few more kits so that you guys have a few more options if anybody else still needs a kit. So that is um, the way that would be. And of course, your photo would be in the center underneath um, my frame here. So again, it lines right up with um, these inner cuts and that edge just lines up beautifully with that. So you're all set right there. Last but not least, we have um, the string itself. And I know we, we did this the other day and it, we didn't know a better way to explain it. You have a male and a female end. You're gonna to wanna to take the male end um, and put that through. It will um, kind of get stuck a little bit more if you use it the other direction. So we're literally gonna take that tip and slide that right through and that is all there is to it. I got these off of Amazon as well. I love these. I absolutely hate ornament hooks. So I am so gonna buy a set of these for the house and make everything have new hanging. So um, we've got basically a ball tip here on the male end and then it's going to sit right inside there and they snap together. And then we have our string, it's a piece of cake. It works so very easy and it's just absolutely, I think that that's perfect. It matches, it's great. Um, and it's so going to happen in my house this year because I'm so tired of those stupid hooks that fall off and I can never find them. So last but not least, we talked about actually embellishing um, this piece a little bit more. So in the Dreaming Trees designs, um, they actually use rhinestones and they actually have rhinestones all the way around their center frame as well as possibly out on those outer rings. So I really liked, especially when we didn't have that outer red, I loved using the red out there because I think it tied in really nicely up here. And hey, Kathy, yeah. yes, you did. <laughs> um, and so these have been placed um, just on these outside tips. And um, I have my original one, which I just made with stuff that I have at home. And I use the clear. So these can be any um, type of crystals that you would like. These here are the brother crystals that are with the scan and cut stuff. It is, um, they're a little bit less shiny, if you will, than the Swarovskis. Um, this here, you can see those are Ashley Swarovski crystals. So um, just a little bit different. Um, they do make red brother. Um, I couldn't find any open packages, so I went with um, a package of the Swarovskis, which um, come like this. So these are heat applied. And I apologize, I meant to bring that over here and I forgot. So give me one second, I'm gonna grab my tool and I'll be right back. So this is one of my favorite little gadgets to have at home. This is made by Floriani and it is um, a cordless heat setting tool. It just has a single tip here, which is nice and um, flat, you can see that. And you basically are pressing that directly onto the rhinestone and then it goes, um, the heat goes right through the top of the rhinestone and into the paper, fabric, whatever that happens to be. So both the Swarovskis that we have here in shop and the Brother Rhinestones are all a heat applied rhinestone. All right, so they are iron on. And what we want to do is simply place that in that area. So you can move it around, you can use tweezers, whatever it is that floats your boat to get your rhinestone where you want it, okay? So I've got that centered and you can't see that quite well. So right there it's centered inside that little nook. To make this work, we simply push this button and the light goes on. So you guys can see that that light is changing. So when that light is on, it is heating. I need to apply pressure, all right? And it's going to take just a few seconds for that to sit. This is fabulous for those random rhinestones when you're using a scan and cut rhinestone kit that doesn't, um, there's always one that flips upside down or just, just doesn't go in the right spot. So this is really great to fix. Um, and you can see um, that they stay right in there. So you can heat apply right onto your um, paper as well. I like to use this for individual settings. So maybe you have a embroidery design that you want to just add that little extra pop in there and it works really, really well. I'm going to go ahead and switch my cameras back so that you guys don't have to watch that camera bouncing around. Um, but I use this all the time and I love it. It's just a battery operated little doodad. There is not um, a very clear 
which end goes up, you know, positive or negative. So if you put the batteries in and it doesn't light, take them back out and flip them the other way and you'll be good to go. Um, it, it just takes a second. So it takes two double A's and then this just slides in. And when we push and then turn and then it locks the lid in place. And then we have um, a working tool, which is so, so great. Um, I have a jacket that I did a um, peacock really large peacock, which um, happens to be in a need a good design pattern. Um, but then I used um, this and I placed rhinestones in all of the um, eyes for the feathers. And I put a rhinestone in the centers of all of those. Um, yes, this is just really, really great. Um, <laughs> yes, it absolutely could. Shanae. I see that you commented about maybe put um, clear rhinestones on the red and the red. I think that would be um, really, really nice as well. So um, that is what I have for you guys today. And I hope um, that helps. I don't know if you guys have looked for photo um, ornaments in the past. I looked last year and I decided that I was not going to purchase them because they were like 15 plus a piece. Um, so we're selling the kits for a dollar. I know I have five over there of the red with the red. Um, and I will, um, I'll bring in some adhesives at home because I happen to maybe have a little bit of a stash so that I can make a few more kits. So if you are looking for those, um, we are allowing up to six. So if one person calls and wants all five of those, unfortunately, that's all I would have. Um, but like I said, I will make a few more uh, because the adhesive is then what I ran out of for these. So I will do that. And I hope uh, that this helped you guys out. Scan and Cut certainly can make lots and lots of really fun things, um, especially during the Christmas season. A lot of gifts super fast between heat transfer, rhinestones, ornaments, all that fun stuff. So I hope this helped you guys and I enjoyed you checking in with me. We'll see you next time. Um, this will be recorded on both YouTube and Facebook. So you can